Eric Crawford here with Ultra Pure Systems. As an owner of a company, I often get asked to, do you have an installation video of your humidifiers? Um, something we're really proud of what we have done over the last two years in this project. Putting all the pieces and parts and all the resources it took to, to get these humidifiers to a place they are today uh, in the ease of installation. And, and that's truly the, dif the differentiation that we have from other manufacturers. And um, they all make great humidifiers. One thing that's very different with ours is they're just much easier to install. And in years past, ultrasonic humidification has been a little more complex. So uh, we hope that you're, you're able to find that throughout this video. In the box, there's going to be a clear bag if you decide on purchasing one of our units or are interested. That clear bag is going to have multiple uh, components in it, and every one of them are going to be used by the time the installation is complete. The only thing that we don't have are wall anchors, and there's just so many variations and types of wall anchors, we just don't know. So that's something that's going to have to be purchased locally. But other than that, you should have everything required to get this unit up and running. I hope throughout this video you'll be able to take away a couple of the suggestions and tips and uh, things that we've learned having a mechanical company for so many years that has brought lessons learned. And with lessons learned, we, we learn and we get better and hopefully this video will share those with you as well. So without any delay, let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to want to do is take the white piece of paper that's in the humidifier box, which is your template, and place it on the wall. Before you do that, I'd encourage you to think about where the humidifier is going to be placed, and here's why. A lot of times humidifiers get put in places they shouldn't, and unfortunately, the reason is, is because the cool mist that is displaced out of all of these nozzles is just that, it's very cool. And because it's cool, it's gonna require time for absorption. And if those very small droplets of water, extremely small droplets of water, touch any surface, they're gonna get larger and larger to a point it becomes a droplet, and that's where we have water on the floor, which is never good. So I'd encourage you to think about where the humidifier is going to go. Here's an image that's in the IOM manual with the distances that we need in front, side to side, top to bottom, and roof deck to the top of the humidifier. Please conform to those measurements. It's very important. One of the things we talk to our technicians about is drawing an imaginary box during the installation, and nothing can be in that imaginary box. That way, you could be confident that the mist is going to get absorbed into the airstream. One of the problems that we have found in the installation phase is the guys installing it just don't know that, and it's a very important part of installation. Once you know where the humidifier is going to go, you could tape the template onto the wall. Make sure that it is rolled out flat, and you're gonna need a torpedo level or a four foot level, which we use, and you're going to want to make sure where it says level line that we are in fact level. And what that's going to do is confirm to you that the humidifier, once it sets onto the L brackets, is going to be level. If not, what's going to happen is the very small water bed that is below um, in the humidifier, if it's not level, it's going to affect the operation of the mist that comes out of all these nozzles. So it's a very important part of installation to make sure. The last thing you're going to want to do is with the pilot holes, and there's a bullseye, with a, a screwdriver or an awl or something, you're just going to want to push it into the wall and that will mark where your L brackets are going to be. Fairly simple. At that point you can take the template off the wall and it served its purpose. Once the template's off the wall, you're going to want to get anchors, and that's where you'll, you'll use the holes in the wall for. We don't, we don't supply anchors. That's the only thing we don't supply. There's just so many variations. But just make sure whichever anchor you do use that it's going to support the weight of the humidifier, and below are the weights of each one we carry. It's also in the IOM manual. 
Once the L brackets are on the wall, don't tighten them completely, but get them on the wall. And we're also going to hang the terminal that comes in the box with the 10 foot cord, RJ11 cord. We're gonna hang it so it's behind the humidifier, or I'm sorry, on side of the humidifier, but we're gonna run it behind the humidifier so you don't see the cord coming out of the wall. Okay, now that we took the template off the wall and we were able to see where the holes are to mount the L brackets, we put the, we put the anchors into the wall and at that point, we just secured the L brackets behind me. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is to make sure the L brackets are level, horizontally, left to right. The small torpedo level that we were using a little earlier probably won't work for this purpose unless you have something longer that you could put on top of it because the distance in between these. Here's a standard four foot level. And again, we just wanna make sure that the bubble is right in between those lines. And there's a very important reason for that. The water bed in these humidifiers is extremely small. And if we have more water on one side than the other, the outcome is going to be, you may not get the same mist coming out of all the nozzles. So you may think it, once it starts and there's not as much mist coming out, something's wrong internally. And most times it's just because the humidifier wasn't level. So that's a very important piece of installation. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do with the torpedo level is make sure that the humidifier brackets vertically are level top to bottom on both sides. And at that point, you could tighten them up. The last thing you're gonna to wanna to verify, and it should be very close, is the distance in between the holes where the humidifier bolts are going to go on all four of them. In this case, on the bottom of the humidifier, if you lay it on its back, you'll see where the threads are. You're just gonna to wanna to measure in between those threads, and I've already done that, and with this humidifier, it's 22 and a half inches. So we just wanna make sure that with the tape measure, we have 22 and a half inches to the center of those holes. And what that's gonna do is just make it really easy to align the humidifier up when you get it up onto uh, the L brackets. The next step is to get the secondary containment tray that we include with all of our humidifiers. As a safety measure, if something were to ever go wrong with the humidifier and water were to get out of it, the water would be captured in the tray. We design these trays for each individual model of humidifier. Inside a clear bag, inside the clear bag, you'll have a bulkhead fitting. That bulkhead fitting is going to attach to the tray. In the corner, there's a larger hole. And that hole is where you will put the bulkhead fitting. It's very important that you put the bulkhead fitting from the top down and then you'll wanna put the nut on the bottom. At that point, the tray is going to serve as a safety water tray. It has standoffs on them, so the humidifier doesn't set inside the pan. And then in the middle of the standoffs are where the bolts are gonna go that we're going to squeeze the whole thing together. At that point, you can put the, second, the, the pan on and it's ready to go. If you put the humidifier on, on its back, very gently, you'll find there is a push connection fitting in the corner. In the clear bag, there'll be a yellow tube. It's about three quarters of an inch long. You're gonna wanna push that yellow tube into the JG fitting. And that's gonna be your primary drain. So when you get the humidifier lifted up onto the tray, that tube is gonna go directly into the, the, the bulkhead fitting. It's gonna align perfectly in the center. So if any water drains out of the humidifier, it's gonna drain right into the bulkhead fitting so you don't get any water in the tray. We also have a leak detector that you can purchase with these that works really well. It's relatively inexpensive 
And if any water were to get out, that leak detector would pick it up in the tray. There's a short video on that if you're interested. The final step is to get the bolts out of the clear bag and have a half inch socket, shallow socket available. And what you'll want to do is just put the bolts through the L brackets, through the tray, and align all four holes. That's going to make it really easy when you lift the humidifier up, you're going to be able to align this bolt with the threads of the humidifier. I wouldn't suggest using any kind of impact or torque to thread these um, bolts. Do it by hand. It works really well. Once you get all four of them started, you can use a standard ratchet and tighten them up. At that point, your humidifier is secured and all we have left is the water, the drain, and the electrical. And we're completed with this installation. All right, we're at the final of installation of this Sigma humidifier. Once it's on the wall and you've secured it with the supplied bolts, you could terminate the inlet water to the humidifier. Included in the uh, clear bag is a five micron particulate filter. And that's gonna remove any debris that might have got through the line during installation. I would highly encourage using that. We also have a small fitting in the clear bag that will push into the inlet on back of the humidifier. And that's gonna keep your tubing from kinking or bending too tight because the humidifier is fairly close to the wall. We have decorative caps that are in the clear bag and those decorative caps can just be pushed into the bottom of the L brackets and that just covers the bolts. The last thing that we did was supplied 115 volts with the included cord. You don't have to use this cord. You could hardwire right into it. But for convenience, if you'd like to use it, that's fine. And it can be plugged into a standard 115 volt receptacle. Inside the left-hand panel, black panel, you'll see three terminals. One is green and the other ones are black and they will be marked L and N for line and neutral. I'd really encourage this to be done by a licensed electrician. The last thing you're going to want to do on the left hand side is plug in the RJ11 fitting for your terminal. Very easy to identify. Just plug it in. At that point you could put the uh, black panel on and you've completed installation. Thank you for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact your local representative or call the number below. Thanks for watching. Enjoy.